Jonas will be reading our gospel reading for us. And after our gospel reading, Jack will be speaking to us. The reading from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to the end. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love today's reading. It's an early testing of the disciples' faith and an opportunity for Jesus to reveal to them quite plainly who he is and what he is about able to do. It shows both the disciples and the reader that Jesus has, has power over the forces of nature. It helps illustrate what it means to live by faith instead of fear and how putting our trust in Jesus, putting our trust in God throughout the storms in our lives can help us to build a more grounded and all around stronger and more resilient faith. I've always been mesmerized by the sea, its beauty, whatever lurks beneath it and of course it's sheer volume. Apart from overfishing, it seems to be the one place on earth that man just can't seem to tame, despite how much they've tried to throughout the years, such as its immense power and unpredictability. One moment it's as gentle as a mill pond, and the next the tide changes, the waves are crashing, the currents and undercurrents moving with such force and what was once, um, what was a moment ago, a picturesque postcard scene turns into utter chaos, a total threat to life. Now I'd say I'd all, I've always been a natural swimmer. I took to it like a duck to water, if you'll pardon the expression. I've always rushed to get my feet in the med as soon as possible whenever we've been abroad. The Mediterranean itself is almost entirely landlocked, so it generally stays quite calm. I always remember a time when I was about 12 years old, swimming in a rocky cove off of Gran Canaria, which is in the Atlantic, so liable to quick changes in conditions. I was having a whale of a time snorkeling, looking for fish and crabs, and it was lovely and calm. All of a sudden though, it became really quite choppy and I was being thrown about everywhere. I thought it was quite amusing actually, as you're often without fear at that age, but my dad jumped straight in to get me. Now, before he'd even surfaced, I'd climbed out, but I remember being quite worried when he really struggled to get out and was getting bashed against the rocks. Thankfully, he was fine, apart from a few cuts and bruises. I imagine it was probably a similar experience for the disciples out there enjoying themselves, nets in the water, so calm that Jesus even decides to catch 40 winks, and then bam, utter chaos. The disciples, of course, were in the enviable position of having Jesus in there in the flesh. But from what we read at that moment, it doesn't seem to do much to settle their unease. As I said before, the sea is the one place where we mere mortals have no power at all. The sea is in God's hands only. Even in the secular world, when there's an extreme weather event that causes problems, it's labelled an act of God. And it's here in this passage where we see God doing the thing that only he can do, this time in the person of Jesus Christ. The disciples up to now have seen Jesus work miracles. They've listened to his teachings, 
But it's at this point where he commands the waves that they really begin to see what he can do. The men with him would have been familiar with the Old Testament stories where God did some amazing things for their ancestors. Think about Noah and the flood or the parting of the Red Sea. This isn't something just any old Tom, Dick and Harry does. This is the work of God himself. Jesus shows us that he can do the thing that the Father does because he is in the Father and the Father is in him. Jesus shows us and the disciples through this act that he is the Lord of the creation. And we see this throughout the scriptures in both the Old and New Testaments. I think for a lot of us, the Old Testament can seem quite distant. We speak often of Jesus, but much less of creation. And there are a lot of different ideas amongst us and within the church about how literally the story of our creation is to be taken. There are some that take the literal face value view that just as it's written, the view that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. There are some who hold that although inspired by God, the Bible was written by human hands, fallible hands, and therefore they contain a discrepancy here and there. And there are others still who believe that the stories told in Genesis are often metaphorical. They're to tell a story, they're to teach a lesson, just like the parables found in Jesus's teaching throughout the Gospels. They're there to give us an inkling, something perhaps to work ourselves through and ponder on. Now, what other school of thought you take, whatever camp you find yourself in, one thing is certain, one thing that unites people and churches the world over, the triune God, a God that is three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was there at the very centre of creation. Jesus is Lord of creation. We see evidence of this throughout the Bible. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come, came, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, and through whom we live. John's Gospel also affirms this straight away, referring to Jesus as the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was there in the beginning, and through him all things made were made. This opening verse points us straight back to Genesis, where in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. We also read in the second verse of Genesis how the Spirit of God hovers over the water. The God of creation, three in one, was there in the beginning, is now, and shall ever be. Just as the disciples faced a storm in today's reading, so we too will often have faced storms in our own lives, times when we've been truly frightened or lost. Particularly, I think of this last year that's been so difficult for so many people, many of whom across the globe are still struggling desperately. But it's at these times where we put our faith in God to the test, when we, looked, when we need to look to him only for the guidance and safety that he offers, the God of our salvation, our strength and our shield. It's at these times when we put our trust in him and he delivers that our faith grows and develops into something that is unshakable. It's that same God of creation, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that the people of the Bible from Genesis through to Revelations, from the early church right through the ages, have put their trust into. And it's that same God we put our trust into and worship today. So let's pray. Father God, you formed us from death, from dust of the earth and placed us in the garden. Remind us of our place as your creatures at home in your creation. Forgive us when we forget our connection to the earth and our dependence upon the goodness of your world. Our Saviour Jesus Christ, you were born into this world and made your earthly home in Nazareth. Help us to know and love the people and places where you have set us. Forgive us when we fail to care for our homes, our communities and your creation. Spirit of God, you desire to grow in us your fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness and self-control. Forgive us when our roots are so shallow and our hearts so restless that our lives fail to bear fruit. Enable us to find our home in you and in the places to which you call us. Lord of creation, we thank you that we can trust you to be the guidance that we need in the storms that travel us throughout our lives. We pray that you continue to guide us through the storm that your creation has been passing through throughout this last year, and that your light will shine brighter still as a beacon of hope for all your people. Amen.